Hi, I'm Jane M. Mason from Watching Paint Dry LLC. In this mini demo, I'm going to talk to you about ways that you can practice to improve your skills. And sometimes it's just frustrating to be in a painting and not be able to create the look that you want. So here are some things that I have done just to help make sure that when I'm in the middle of a painting, I can bring to fore those things that I want to use in the painting. One of the things I've done is taken a lot of time and looked at different paints. This is one of my examples of just spreading out. These happen to be all Daniel Smith's paint. It's a very fine paint that I like a lot. I don't use it exclusively, but there are some colors that I really like in it. So here I've taken a bunch of the red, the cool tones from the reds all the way through the purples and the blues to see how they look. What I started with was taking a dab of the paint fresh from the tube. So I squeezed some of the paint like he'd squeeze toothpaste, toothpaste right from the tube onto the paper. And the reason I did that is I wanted to know what is the maximum, absolute maximum amount of pigment I can get from this tube. So you can also see here, I hope, and if you can't see it on this sheet, I hope you'll be able to see it on some of the other sheets. There's some shininess here. The shininess is the gum arabic that is added to the paint as a binder and to uh, help the paint flow. So you also need to know when you use paint at its maximum, you will get this shiny effect. That is not neither a good thing nor a bad thing. It's just something you need to know about and you can control it. So going across, then I added water to try to see what is the lightest possible shade I can get from this color. And these happen to be pinks that I really like. I wouldn't necessarily have thought these pinks would have come from this really intense, brilliant color. The same as when you go through some of these other colors, you can see, wow, this pale, pale lavender isn't necessarily what I could expect. The other thing I did was then when the paints were dried, I tried to see if I could remove the paint. And it, because often you do lifting and you want to pull off as much of the paint as you can. So these blank spots are where I saw I could lift. Wow, this purple, you can see, lifts great. This blue lifts great. Pink, mm, sort of. And this really doesn't lift at all. So the nice thing about this exercise is that you can see this would not be a good color to use if I'm going to go back and try to lift paint. There are times that, I think on the next one you'll see, I have, maybe the next one. This also is Daniel Smith paint. These are greens. It's the same concept. You can see though in this particular green, this has a lot of granulation. And this granulation in this color actually means that the paint has some flecks that are heavier and they fall in the little divots of the paper. So if you want this granulated look, which you might if you're doing rocks or things like that, it's a wonderful look that you can't create unless you're using a granulated paint. So this is something too it's good to learn about. If you were doing something that had a smooth surface, you would not want to be using a granulating paint. So again, the exercise was just to look at the same properties I was looking at before. Again, this happens to be American Journey paints, which is a cheap Joe's paint. It's a very good quality paint. It's uh, not the paint I use all the time, but I do use some colors from it. So I, it's cheaper than like a Winsor Newton or Daniel Smith, and like I said, a high quality paint. None of these reds lifted super well, so that was something to think about. This is one of the ones that I have a hole punched in the corner. Uh, when I did these exercises, I punched a hole in the corner of a lot of them so I could keep them on the edge of my drafting board, almost like a palette that you'd find at a paint store so I could remind myself, okay, what about this paint, what about this paint? It was very handy. Now this one, okay, I decided, let me see if I mix every one of these yellows with every one of these colors. So this color is the mix of this blue and this yellow this green and this yellow. And not only was it a kind of a fun exercise to practice painting in a box and to see how square my edges could be, it was really fun to just mix all these colors. It did take a long time. So it's not something I'd suggest you get started on if you're in a big rush to find things out. Just go ahead and mix a couple of paints and see what you think. But in terms of being able to see the subtleties, it allows you to absorb how many different variations you can get on colors. So these are some of the things that I use to practice. Some of the other things I use to practice is taking a half sheet 
just drawing these little sketchy squares, I would then practice doing some of these flowers. Underneath, I would write my notes on what I actually did. Under the daffodils, for example, it says a triangular cone for daffodil with uh, spiky floral petals. So that reminds me that I started with the triangular cone part and then added the petals. It was wet on wet, so things were, the colors were running together. This was a practice looking at negative space, and we'll talk about negative space more in some other videos too. But here, this leaf is going to be in the foreground, and everything behind here is the background, is the negative space. I created these little blobs that also look like leaves by taking tissues and just blotting off the color. So you can see that example of looking at what color lifts well. This was helpful for me because I could say, well, this is going to lift pretty well when I blot it off with paper towels. This was where I tipped in some paint, and again, I gave all my instructions so I could reproduce this. Again, some more flowers. This one I'll point out to you because it uses a watercolor pencil. I like watercolor pencils, and I use them quite a bit, and we'll talk about those in other videos. But these little dots on the lilies, that's from a watercolor pencil. I think it's the perfect look to get all those little dots on the stargazer lily. This is an example where I was practicing on painting rosemary, and this was where I was practicing putting droplets, water droplets on leaves. Instead of spending all your time painting, spend some of your time just practicing on some of these exercises that I've shown you here. Thank you very much. I'm Jane M. Mason.